Angela Johnson has worked at Rich's Burgers and Grub for about six months, but she's been in Salt Lake for decades. Her perspective is sobering. I have never seen it this bad in downtown Salt Lake. Across the street at the Bureau Barber and Shop, no, Dave Broderick. But it's the safety issue, man. Like feels the same way. There's a noticeable uptick in the activity, in the aggressiveness, um, the drug dealing out in the open. Many label it the homeless issue. It can be that, but also much more. Drug use, mental illness, camping, panhandling. Businesses say it's turning customers away. There's people shooting up on the street, smoking crack on the street, and they feel unsafe. That affects our business. Working downtown in this environment is dangerous. It's dangerous for myself. It's dangerous for my girls. I don't know what else to do. Have you let the city know about this Over and problems? over again. We had meetings and meetings about it. And she would send her people to meet with us on Wednesdays. Who's or, she? Um, the mayor. The mayor would send her people? Mm -hmm. She never came. We invited her, emailed her. And we've been on national news. We've been on Fox News. Um, and we've tried. And has the mayor ever personally responded? Not once. No, no, not once. But, How do you feel about um, that? I feel like it's, she just doesn't care. And we need somebody that cares. New tonight, business owners in Salt Lake City say they are frustrated with the state of downtown. Yeah, they say drug use is rampant, customers and employees are being threatened, and the city, they say, is not doing enough to address the issue surrounding homelessness. What are some of the worst examples that you've endured? <laughs> Boy, I could, I could go on and on with this, too. I, I've had numerous uh, homeless, when I have customers coming in, that they're actually getting aggressive with the customers mostly females where they will actually grab the, the females and, and ask them for money and not even let them through the doors to the store until they give up the money where and it's getting to the point where a lot of the customers don't even want to come downtown. My son was physically attacked at the desk, had his glasses busted, punched in the head a couple of times. Have you lost any employees over it? My son quit, was, just couldn't put up with it any longer. Business owners in downtown Salt Lake City say they have a real problem on their hands. Customers and even employees don't feel safe coming and going into their shops. It's just like a small business, how can you make it? When most of my business is coming from the hotels, on either side or American Towers. And then the hotels, they don't wanna walk here. I have clients walking here from the hotels and saying how they get harassed walking over here. It's just, it's it's too much. It's to the point where people are just scared. They're scared to come down to, to Main Street. We have numerous businesses that have been closing up on Main Street. And when we call the local police department, it takes them two hours if they even do show up. You call the police every time, what do they do? Well, lately they've been a little more responsive, but in general, they don't even arrive. Uh, but if they respond, do they make any arrests? Do they... they don't arrest anybody. They just ask them to move along, and uh, that's what they've been told to do. I, I was specifically told that they have been asked not to, uh, not to mess with them and to just leave them alone to allow them to be. So if, we've, if we had issues, and we said it was a transient, or we said it was a homeless camp, or anything like that, we would have a police officer call us and talk to us on the phone and listen to the whole story and say they would do what they could, and nothing happened. We've had incidents where the homeless will be laying on our front door, and we'll ask them to leave. We call the police. The guy physically pushed the police. Anyways, he physically pushed the, the policeman, and, um, the policeman, I asked him why he didn't arrest him. I said, that's salt if I push you. And he said, the mayor told us not to touch them, just to ask them to move along. It seems like the accountability chain is just broken. When the police do come, which you say is about 50% of the time? Yeah, about 50%. They don't make arrests? No, they just get them to move along. One person they arrested and they said, she'll never bother you again, but she was right back out within 24 hours to bother us every day since and yell at my employees and be aggressive toward everyone just trying to pull into our parking lot which is a private parking lot for employees and, and we don't feel safe going in and out. They're not gone more than a half an hour after the police fire department and health department come and they're moving right back in after they you know made a move. In terms of the see something say something 
approach that has been advocated here this afternoon. Business owners say they've done that. They've reached out to political leaders, they've reached out to the mayor's office, they've reached out to the police, and yet these problems, crime, and now defecation on the parking lot still continue. You seem like you're at the end of your rope here. Well, <laughs> as usual, I'm frustrated. <laughs> Yeah, she says her parking lot right across from a homeless shelter is being used as a toilet. It is disgusting. This is a dog boarding business. It is right across the street from the Gail Miller Homeless Resource Center. So people at this business, they're used to cleaning up after dogs, but now back there in the corner of the parking lot, they're cleaning up after people. Go ahead and do their business right behind. Michelle Goldberg at Ground Zero. <laughs> She loves dogs, loves people, but this is beyond words. It's been daily um, for the past few weeks. I have crap all over around my doorway. We have to clean up daily. Sometimes they will take um, poop on our walls and smear it. Sometimes they'll poop on our glass and smear is it. Is this human well. excrement right over here this in the is, corner? This is. And we called the city and asked them to clean it. All they basically did was put baking soda on it. And so. it, you said that the people have taken the the feces and smeared it on yes, your windows smeared it across this um plaster paris stuff and it's hard to get out and then they smear it across the the windows and i come out and i scrub them and when you say that you're talking about it's a it's a common occurrence oh yes find they, human they, excrement they do it all the time uh i would say in the last month we've probably had five different piles of it this is human excrement? Yes, it is. And we, we asked the city to remove that for us, but they haven't really been on top of that. They're not very good about it. So it's $90 an hour for them to come clean up poop. And uh, for a while, if it was in our, in our parking lot instead of on public property, they would say they would split the cost with any business owner that wanted their help. So we'd only have to pay $45 an hour for them to come out and clean the transients uh, poop out of our out of our parking lots so you've had to clean up human feces on your own property every week every week sometimes every day well if the wind hits you it just smells like a, like you're standing in a sewer there's human feces here that's been sitting here and people you know peeing all over the place i can smell human waste right here do you smell it i can smell it and is this a common thing it's every day now. There's someone's urinated right here. There's feces that's been on the wall. Was it like this, say, four or five years ago? No, it was not. No, it was manageable. People did not have a sense of entitlement. You would ask them to move along and explain to them that you're trying to run a business and they would leave and they would not come back. We need some help. The city really needs help. We've gone through a lot the past few years. They are saying that things are getting worse and quickly. Teresa, describe some of the worst things that have happened to you and your business so far. We had a chair thrown off the top of our building. A homeless guy snuck in our building and he got in the hot tub and he bathed for an hour and then he threw heavy metal chairs and it came down and hit our awning and it almost hit two of our girls walking out from work at night. Um, We've had also a guy sitting in the front of our door and we asked him to leave and he started masturbating. It was in front of this window? Yes. Yeah, so one and of the you girls had customers and had employees? Customers. One of the girls was doing a haircut right over there and a man just decides to take down his pants and starts masturbating to my clients. And this has happened on two other occasions. They're getting aggressive, and like Teresa has mentioned, they're exposing themselves, they're defecating right on our front porch. Loose dogs, it's, it's just getting out of control. People hanging out and doing whatever they wish to do, which is deal drugs and smoke crack and shoot heroin. We had a fellow down here a week ago having a seizure, and by the time uh, the officers and the, and the fire department were able to get here, there was another guy down in the driveway with a needle sticking out of his arm of a heroin overdose. All within a 12 minute period. There was a needle over here. Just off the 600 South exit. Cigarettes, broken glass. Outside an antique store. That's a balloon for heroin. The owner is disturbed by his most recent finds. I have not cleaned this area up this week. Scott Evans says the garbage has been collecting at an alarming rate. 
along with drug paraphernalia. They're sitting around and they're usually hitting the crack pipe. As the homeless stack up along his building. Just in the last uh, week and a half, we've got about three times as many people as we have previously had. Evans says it hasn't been this bad since before Operation Rio Grande. Down here, we are under siege. When I got in this morning on this block in the medium, I counted 38 individuals. He says he's witnessed open air drug use, defecation, and he's even been attacked. By a woman who was on methamphetamine and just went crazy on me, started swinging at me and spit all over me. I've been pushed and shoved and uh, my daughter has had to lock the door of somebody who was trying to kick the door in. It's just, it's endless. I've seen numerous fights. I've seen people just getting just assaulted and it's just, it's crazy. Right above us, as you can see right up here, those are bullet holes. How many fires have been lit here in, say, the last six months? Uh, in the last one month, it, there have been seven. Um, last, in one month? In one month, seven. They're burning things in enclosed spaces. That's, you know, that's, it's really dangerous. And I, like, the things I don't want to deal with are, you know, people being put into body bags across the street while we're trying to, you know, serve up lunch and a good time to people at our bar. The number of gun gunshots seems sort of outlandish. Brewery owner Rob Phillips says it's not uncommon to hear about crime in this neighborhood. I've seen the flashing lights of Roja in the background from the, the news story. Last July, police investigated a shooting in the same spot. Phillips says in 2020, his business was hit. Where there was some shooting that occurred across the street and a stray bullet did come across into the window. Businesses in downtown Salt Lake City continue to struggle with crime and issues with the homeless population. Just two weeks ago, Fox 13 News reported on a downtown business constantly facing harassment and violence. Now one business has closed its doors and decided to move elsewhere because of it. It started in 2019 when a family that was using drugs assaulted store employees. Left her with a concussion and bruised chest. In 2021, this incident was caught on camera. A man police were chasing running into the store. Was ranting, pacing around frantically, really scaring the customers and my staff and then started to take his shirt off and at one point looked like he was going to hit my general manager. I just decided in that moment that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and expecting a different result. Everyone we spoke to tonight preached compassion and connecting people with services. So it's not that you're not sympathetic with the plight I'm of homeless very, people. I'm very, very sympathetic. I care for them. I care but for any human being. I've worked of with these homeless experiences? a lot for three years. Every Wednesday, I'd go down there with me and my team, and we would do their hair for free to help women get a job. I bought two of them cars. I had two of them come and work for me. I helped them get apartments. I bought a girl teeth so she could have teeth to find a job. I've given them clothes. I've given them so food. I've, I've helped time and time again. But all this Situation. interruption and the damage and and the trauma that you, your daughter, other employees have experienced Nothing is being done about it no. by the city. No, In nothing. In fact, they're just turning a blind eye to it. Yes. We have to find the balance between care and concern, but also accountability for these people and their actions. If your city applies a hands-off approach, this is what happens. 